Hi guys, and welcome to this week's video blog. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, this is a little bit strange for me. This is very strange for me as well. Oh, right, because we, we don't get to do the video blogs. Um, normally it is uh, your dad and Dave that is uh, that is here, um, but a bit of a change today. Um, your dad is off doing other stuff, yeah. and Dave is on his honeymoon. Sunning it up. Sunning it Sunning up in it Florida. Up. Uh, Florida, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Dave's Dave's wedding was amazing. We were we were privileged yeah. to be there. Congrats. Um, congrats. Uh, it was it was a good day, wasn't yeah, it? Was, it? It was very fun. Yeah, and uh, lots of lots of magicians there. Seeing uh, Steve, because I sorry, I just I come over. Uh, Steve Dell was on the table there doing magic, and right. then all I hear is Leo's whistles from yeah. across the room <laughs> doing his little cap thing. What's that called? Uh, chink, a chink, chink. chink. Yeah, yep. doing that. It was really good seeing everyone doing that. Yeah, there was a there was a, a lot of magic uh, being performed and a lot of drink flowing yeah. as well, which was uh, which was amazing. I, I yeah. think every magician that was in attendance ended up doing something. Uh, myself and your dad included, I, I believe. Mm. Uh, Leo really sort of led the day. <laughs> if you'd seen him over the, over the dinner, it was uh, it was truly amazing. It's just the noise he makes, isn't it? You probably you know he's there, don't you? I I think you know there was one point uh, he does it. Obviously, you guys have seen the thing with the whistles before. Um, he does this thing where he, he pretends to set off a, a firework, <laughs> and there was one point in the evening uh, where I think it was just after the first dance. And he let off his firework, and it was uh, heads were turning. It was it was very this very is funny, awesome. um, but it it was great. And uh, bride looked beautiful, and mm. Dave looked very handsome, and it was just a truly uh, beautiful day. So yeah, uh, once nice. again, congrats uh, to Dave and Ben on, on their wedding. Congratulations. Uh, so Harry, it's slowly mm. approaching uh, my favourite time of year. Christmas. Well, fast, no, far, all right, fastly approaching because my favourite time of year is Halloween. Oh, uh, I just love scary. Everything's scary. I'm not gonna lie. I get scared. I'm not gonna put on a brave face. I get petrified with anything, but right. I enjoy it. Right. It okay. Well, I think there's something uh, quite healthy about being scared. Of, get scared of stuff. I, I'll be the first to go on camera and say that I I hate horror films. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do hate horror films. Uh, that's not to say that I haven't seen uh, some before, but compared to some of the ones that you've probably watched, mm. I. Yeah, don't don't do horror. However, um, I do uh, I do like horror effects, um, and uh, we have a good choice of horror effects mm -hmm. here here today, um, and we're going to take a look at some of them. Yeah. So, um, should we talk about this first? Yes, I so, think so. Yeah. I think that'd be good. This is just a little kind of uh, additional thing uh, that we've got in stock at the minute, and they're basically just playing cards, but they got a nice Halloweeny, scary design. Uh, so on the back, you can see. Uh, almost, you can see skulls and, and bats and everything like that. So they're quite cool little cars, very, uh, very seasonal. Very they? seasonal, yeah. yeah. And and the thing is, is that you know, um, they, these sort of cards. If, if you're at function, you know, if you're at a Halloween party and there's going to be children there or, yeah. or even the adults, I guess, uh, you take these out. It's just a little bit different, isn't it? And they're going to notice, aren't they? Everyone. Yeah. If you've got nice cards or Halloween cards, they will say, oh, they'll yeah. notice that they're they're seasonal one. And they're very nice, aren't they? Lovely. So we have those in stock currently. Yeah. Um, so getting quick because uh, we don't have many of them. So it's always worth uh, just checking out. Um, and uh, we also have some some favourites here. So should we should we do these in turn? Should we have a look at these in turn? Yeah. I think uh, that we should have a look at. Uh, let's have a look at Scream first. All right. Yeah. So Scream. Do you know when Scream was released? Uh, I don't think it was that long ago. I, I don't even think it. Or well, maybe this time last year. I think maybe just before actually. But it still gets amazing reactions because uh -huh. Jamie uh, was on our stand at Blackpool and mm. he was performing Scream and every time floors people. Yeah, I mean it, it's one of those effects. Uh, I mean we're going to talk about Jamie quite a bit. Mm. I feel in, yeah. in, the, <laughs> in this discussion. Thing, and uh, th this is the thing, you know, Jamie has a has a knack for finding uh, not just scary but yeah. like um, hair on the back of your neck stand up mm. um, sort of dramatic premise yeah. um, and with something like Scream uh, he, he's certainly done this uh, you've used it a couple of times in the shop I, I believe um, I mean this is the sort of effect right that you, you know yeah. you would go to, yeah. to it is to fun it's one of them things where you just think 
Yeah. That's gonna you know when one of them there's just one of them effects and you just think, yeah, that's a killer. That's just that's one you're guaranteed gonna get a reaction with. That's yeah. a, it's almost it's a safe trick, isn't it? Because you know you're gonna get a reaction every time. Yeah, exactly. And you know, this this is the thing. I mean, yeah, uh, plots uh, plots like this and uh, with some of the other stuff that you're gonna see here, uh, <laughs> they're all about the presentation, they're all about the build up. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not talking flashy card magic here yeah. where something happens when you snap your fingers or anything like that. We're talking about a story, something that's built up um, and that has a surprise ending. And it, you know, it is one of those. Um, and again, you know, like a couple of see, uh, things that you're gonna see here. It, it is something that you would bring out, you would present yeah. rather than just going in and going, oh, look, this is something neat yeah. and, and going into it like a lot of other other effects. Um, so we are going to show you, I believe, the trailer uh, of Dave performing this. Um, yeah. So I think that's great that we yeah. go to that now. Right. Have you heard of Pluckley in Kent? I have, yeah. It, it's probably the most haunted village in Kent, if not the UK. And there's lots of stories which you know, are related to some of the houses and, and areas in Pluckley. And I'm going to tell you one, if okay. I can. Uh, this stems back to the 1920s and this lady here, Susanna Cartwright. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically she was a serial killer. But the police could never pin anything on her because she committed suicide before anything went to trial. So what I'd like to do is to stare into her eyes. I am only joking, by the way. Oh. You didn't, did you? <laughs> I did. Oh no, the people that stare into her eyes are, end up getting cursed. But anyway, that's that's okay. Um, this here is Susanna's house. Now, I'll explain something. This all stemmed back to her husband who cheated on her. She found out, and so that night she went out to the garage, grabbed a shotgun, rested it between his eyes, and the moment when he opened his eyes, she pulled the trigger. Moments later, she went out to the woods behind the house and committed suicide. Okay, and this is the house. Now, some people say they can see her lurking up there at the window when they pass the house. I don't know, I just say that's bad lighting, but it's all down to perception. Okay. Uh, this also, the woods. Now, if you were to visit these woods today, people say they can hear a slight echo of that gunshot that went off that day. But again, these are just stories. Okay. But if you stare into the woods, you might see some eerie shadows in there. Can yeah. you see anything? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, yeah, sort of. That just looks like trees to me. Oh, okay. In my imagination. What, what can you see? No, it does. It just looks like a shadow. Right, okay. Well, you did stare into her eyes, didn't you? I did. I, was yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that if I was you. <laughs> but, and let me explain this. Ten years ago, they looked into these cases again, and all the case files were locked away in a drawer. No one could get near them. However, when they opened it up, all the pictures of all the victims and suspects, all their faces, have been scratched out, carved out, but no one had been near it. So that was a really weird, eerie day in that office. Now, be honest with me, did you stare into her eyes? I did. Okay, can you just part these pictures for no, me? No, no, I'm scared. <laughs> that is pretty freaky. Yeah. But the thing that was more scary is what was written on the letter which accompanied all the pictures. If you could read it aloud for everyone. What in the oh! <laughs> 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 Oh my it's god, a terrifying, I don't know if I'm <laughs> terrifying, terrifying story for uh, thank you anyway. Oh my god, you idiot! <laughs> So that is uh, that is scream, and it's still it still makes yeah, us laugh now. Fun. We we were watching that then as it as it was on the screen, and it, it still makes us laugh now. And I'm sure that Claire still has nightmares about it as well. Um, oh. What I thought was brilliant though is that it, that happens. She reacts, and then she calls Dave for silly sod, <laughs> and then you know everything. So, and I don't think he can cope with that. <laughs> no, it is again. That is one of the. That's not Claire playing up to the thing. No. That is literally that is the reaction you get with scream because you get drawn in by the story. Yeah. And the ending you're just not expecting it at, at all That's so it, it is uh it's killer <laughs> so that is screen um we have these in stock uh, yeah. so check it out now and we also sorry uh you get do you get the caps in there uh you don't get the caps in there um the reason being is well I, actually I, I don't think you get the caps in there um obviously because we ship to the us oh, yeah. uh, we can't put yeah. caps in there um so um 
I, I'm not sure about the English ones. I think we just did them all that you didn't get yeah. the caps, but they're they're easy to find. Yeah, and we've got the link if you uh, email in or whatever. We've got the link because Jamie sourced like these Italian ones or something like that, mm. so we can yeah. give you the link because they like give the loudest bang. Because obviously everything with Jamie got to be the loudest bang, yeah. the loudest whatever, yeah. uh, most dangerous. So yeah, um, we can give you the link uh, to buy them. I think they're on Amazon or something like that. They're not expensive. Yeah. But yeah, if you're if you're after any, but yeah. Brilliant. That is scream. Uh, so I, I think that as we're talking about Jamie, we should we should maybe continue talking about Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Jamie also has uh, this wonderful uh, effect here. Uh, this is He's Not Here. Um, this is uh, number three in the Dark series. Yeah. Um, again, you know, as we were saying just a minute ago, uh, Jamie's stuff is very much based in presentation and storytelling. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, He's Not Here is is no exception it is again mm -hmm. that very presentational slant on uh, bizarre and, and Halloween yeah. type type magic um, there's not really a lot to say I, I mean it, there, there's no doubt like we said that Jamie has a has a, a an eye for, for yeah. this sort of effect and uh, following on from screen he's not here and uh, uh, other of uh, Jamie's mm. works, like you know, deceased, they, yeah, yeah deceased. Uh, they all they all follow this common thread, and you can see that obviously someone that's passionate and interested in that sort mm. of thing, uh, you know, the time and effort and, and thought they put into the, to their effects. But we have got the uh, we have got the trailer for this. Um, so should we quickly hop to the trailer? Yeah, I think that would be a great all idea. Right, yeah, trailer for heat. Think of a time that your eyes believed what your mind could never, that your heart failed to keep pace. Think of a time that you were so scared words completely escaped you. Now give that same experience to your spectators. With one photo, make them see what they never saw and give them undeniable proof that there is life after death. Now, I managed to get hold of this. This is the last remaining photo from the case. Okay. Nobody knows why it's torn. That's sort of part of my fascination. That's part of why I really enjoy the story. Yeah. I presume that this was the, the family, uh, one of the families at the time. Um, have, have a look, it's, it's sort of eerie in itself. Yeah. Now what I'll do is I'll collect up all of the pieces and I'll place them face down. And just look at somebody on there, but get specific. So, so tell me what they're wearing, if they're male, female, tall, short, Okay. Just as much detail as you can from that person, okay? Yeah. Now, I said it was unlike, uh, not too unlike this house. It's because it was actually this house that the event happened. Right. I know, right? Let me just show you this photo. Let's put it back together a bit like a puzzle. It's a bit like the story, really. Everything should be reforming. Now, everybody had the same account of the same person. So everybody said the same thing. So they said he was a sort of, not old, but not young. He was very well dressed. It yeah. was a man, obviously. Does it sound similar? Yeah. Don't tell me you've seen this person. Yeah, it's kind of got. There's nobody in this picture that matches that description. What, what do you mean? <laughs> okay. That is it's... weird. I saw her though. You're always freaking me <laughs> out, man. <laughs> My name is Jamie Dawes, and this is He's Not Here. That was the performance of He's Not Here. Yeah. Um, one thing I think is important to realise about uh, these sort of effects is they, they aren't just, um, uh, you know, we scream, it isn't just that the banger goes off mm. at the end. Um, you do actually have magic effects that, yeah. that occur in the presentation. Sometimes uh, what will happen, especially in bizarre magic effects, you end up with something that isn't really quite clear as to what the mm. magic effect is. Um, but certainly with this, uh, he's not here, and uh, the deceased. Yeah. There, there are definite. Even though you, you've got maybe surprise elements in there, you do actually have magic yeah. that yeah. that happens as well. You have an effect that happens. Another thing in this is, uh, I believe uh, you get photos in there where the woman disappears as well. Yeah. I, um, so there are two. 
things in there. Yeah, um, which is great, obviously, if you're doing like a strolling set or you're going from yeah. table to table because then obviously the out outcome is different. Yeah. But uh, that is killer and it is in their hands as well. Yeah, so, brilliant. Very, very nice. So we have both of these in stock and yeah. the deceased, which is also worth checking out. Um, Harry, I feel that we should have a, a bit of a competition. Oh, I'm going to agree with you there. Yeah, and as um, uh, so, previous competition winners, mm. um, we were just discussing this. They will be announced when Peter and Dave are back. Um, that's, their, that's, their, yeah. that's their thing to do. Their all. domain, so yeah. we, we don't have anything to, to do with that. Um, however, uh, we were discussing about the competition that we should we should yeah. do. There is a famous magician um, whose, uh, whose uh, anniversary of his death is coming up very, very sh uh, soon. Um, and he is famous um, in one of his pictures for quoting the following, which is... Stone walls, not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. So if you can tell us, um, just email in and let us know who yeah. the magician is, uh, then you could be in for a chance of uh, winning some goodies from us, um, which we will get Peter and Dave to announce yeah. uh, a further vlog. So yeah, I think that's mm. that's good. And the email is sales at alakazam as per. Sales at alakazam.co.uk. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we'll look out for that. So um, moving on. Should we have a look at this? I think it, I think it's a given to Beautiful. to be fair. Um, um, we haven't got a trailer for this, but we know what it is. We know what it is. So uh, the web by Jim Pace has been out for for many years, and it's one of those effects that really, you know, it hasn't lost its impact. Mm, um, yeah. It's still popular generally, uh, and it's even more popular at Halloween uh, because everything spooky and nasty yeah. comes out at that time of year. Um, but yeah, the, the web is uh, is a fantastic trick. Um, again, you know, like uh, the other effects that we've talked about here, this effect has something that happens as as well as a a um, like a surprise mm. uh, thing that happens at the yeah. end. Um, I'm sure that most of you out there in in video land are aware that of what this does. Um, like I said, there is an effect that leads up to it, and then you have uh, this surprise appearance of um, said arachnid. Um, so, oh, you're a good freak. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, it, 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 but it's still a, a great yeah, effect. Yeah, it's very fun. Um, now, you may have seen uh, an updated version of this. A few years back, uh, we had uh, Boris, the, the pet mm. spider, uh, which took the concept of the web, uh, i.e. the appearance of uh, a, an object on the back of your hand, uh, to new extremes by incorporating it with... Uh, an app on your on your phone. Uh, oh, that is very freak, isn't it? When you see it yeah. on your hand, that is weird. It does make you. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, with this, the surprise is definitely there. Yeah. With Boris, you get something that leads up to this appearance of the of the spider on the back of your hand. Uh, it's the, uh, Boris is still an amazing effect in its own right. Uh, I've performed Boris quite a few times. It is one of those effects that I'm sure you know you guys will will realize this you've got to choose your audience you've got to choose your spectator correctly uh, i know more than one magician that have performed either this or boris and they've done it with someone that has a fear of spiders um and it has not ended well yeah watch out for fear of spiders or elderly people yeah um because the reaction claire gave in that screen uh, about her nearly having a heart attack, yeah. I believe, wouldn't be far off what this would give you, yeah. to be honest and with that, you. That's it. I mean, we've got to understand that, you know, spiders, I, I don't like spiders, mm. you know, uh, I don't know many people that do, <laughs> um, but, you know, you've got to appreciate that that person that, that has this feeling that something untoward is going to happen with something that they fear, then you, you've yeah. really got, you are treading a, a thin line. So you have to, you do have to be wary of that. Um, I've, I've done it before. When I first started performing Boris, uh, where the, the spider appeared in this lady's hand and she seemed okay with it. Um, I, I think up until the point where she realized it was there oh, yeah. and then her hands flayed and, you know, she really wasn't very, uh, Happy is the wrong word. She, she, I think she was taken more by surprise, yeah. but an uncomfortable surprise. Um, and more so, I then had to try and hunt around on the dark floor for Aww. this spider. Um, but, you know, uh, that, that, that is something that you need to be aware of as performers. So I think it's certainly worth checking out. Mm. Uh, the web. Yeah, also, uh, this is another one of them things where it allows people's uh, timelines to change in their head because Dad performed it once um, and... They went around saying that he had uh, 
What is it? He made a, a tarantula appear. Yeah. Um, so it is one of the things where people's minds do just go crazy. Anything to do with fear yeah. will allow you to have little blips in your memory. Yeah, and so they, f- they fill in the blanks. And yeah. you know, that's, quite, that's quite right. And something you know that you can certainly capitalise on. Yeah. You know, If you're going to have people turn around and say, oh, you know, there was this tarantula on the back of uh, my hand, then you're going to get a name. Yeah, <laughs> you're going exactly, to get a name for yourself. Yeah. Uh, downside is, I guess, that when you perform it, it's not going to be a tarantula. But... You know, uh, perhaps that's the decision that if you perform it yeah. once and they're telling people it's a tarantula, yeah. you don't perform it again yeah. because the, the, the word's already got about. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, the, again, it's down to the power of the presentation. It's down to this, this kind of the way that you're making people feel uh, so much, uh, not so yeah. much the, the way that they're seeing th- things. Um, so two great effects. Uh, this is the web um, and uh, Boris the pet spider, certainly worth checking out. If you didn't want to do the spider, uh, they do have, uh, I believe you can get cockroaches mm-hmm. as well. And you can get butterflies. Oh. How butterflies get into Halloween, I'm not quite no. sure. More of a spring, maybe. maybe. Maybe do that in spring. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, if you kill a butterfly from <laughs> yeah. outer space. Maybe just a bit, le- little bit of red paint around the mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They've sucked a bit of blood yeah. from the hands and, and things. But, oh, yeah. uh, Worth checking out. Yeah, uh, certainly. So this is the web, and also Boris, my pet spider. So Harry, m- many years ago, uh, before I started working for Peter, uh, I was in the shop one day and uh, with Debbie, my wife, and we were having a look at possibly new things that I could start doing. And I'll be the first one to say this, it's very rare that I buy new effects um, mm. over something like a book or a DVD, um, you know, or, or accessories and, and things, but very rare that I buy a new effect. And we were shown a couple of items, uh, we were shown, um, I'm trying to think now. I think it was uh, it, oh, it was the iChange project, um, nice. which I immediately bought because that appeals to, to me as a card worker. Uh, and there was a couple of other items, including this. Uh, so this is uh, Till Death Us Do Part uh, by Jim Critchlow. Now, I, I will say, I, I would not come into any any magic shop and just uh, and buy this sort of effect. It, it's just, it's something that I would feel didn't suit my personality. Mm. And the reason I say didn't is because on the day that I came in and brought the other stuff, this was performed to me. And immediately, both myself and Debbie said, gotta get it, gotta get it. Um, I think, you know, once you see the, the, the actual effect and the, the um, sort of hook that it gives you, uh, you you would feel the, the same. Um, there's very few effects that I do of this this kind. In fact, I think this is probably the only one still. And we're talking quite a few years now. We're talking probably eight nine years ago that I, I first purchased this, and it is it is just great. This is mum. This is mum's favourite trick. Whenever I say. Mum, what's your favourite trick? She always says till death. I think yeah. she got shown at a blackboard or something, didn't she? And right. And fooled I, her and that. And I can understand that. And, you know, it's it's one of those effects that, um, from a from a method point of view, you know, it's, it's very straightforward. Mm. Uh, from an effect point of view, it is extremely powerful. Uh, I have performed this on numerous occasions. I don't perform it all the time. Uh, I'm more inclined to perform it at times of year like Halloween yeah. or um, when the nights are getting darker oh, and it's colder. Uh, um, I have performed this at, at weddings, uh, but in the right yeah. context, uh, I will just add, I've performed it at parties. Um, at one point uh, when I first uh, got this, I, I performed it at a friend of mine's uh, birthday and um, there was some people there that I'd never met before and afterwards they genuinely, we were sitting down talking and they were genuinely asking me questions like, are you psychic, Do you, you know, have you ever had any experience of, of ghosts? Have you, and it really, you know, the top of the conversation for the rest of the evening was pretty much this effect, um, but obviously talking about psychics and, and yeah. you know, and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, so it is an extremely strong effect. Um, in a moment, I'm going to perform it, okay? Uh, but before I do, there's just a, a couple of things I want to tell you about it, just from a, a product point of view. In here, um, you get some photos. The photos will last you a long, long time. Um, you know, provided you take care of them, they will last you a long, long time. Uh, you also get refills in here that are enough for uh, 10 performances. Um, now, you would think, 
for, uh, sorry, uh, let me clarify that. Not 10 performances. You get um, enough in here um, to last you 10 times. But once, you, once you've once you done it, um, the only uh, disc that comes with this, you do actually get the PDFs to reprint oh. the photos. So it's not as if you get 10 performances and then that's it. You can go to Boots or wherever mm. and print off more. Uh, and then, you, you know, you're set for... And they're not expensive. No, they? I mean, we're talking like pence. Um, so, you, you know, you, you've got that in there. Um, apart from that, um, the disc that comes with this, Mark Elsden and Jim Critchlow, when you watch through um, the actual method, the performance, the staging, there is so much great information on here that you can take away and you can apply to other effects. Um, Jim talks on here about a particular technique um, that he goes into a lot of depth with in the context of this routine. But really, if you took the information that you're given and you applied it to other, uh, other effects, it can really hold you in good stead. And, and also Mark Elson as well, uh, the things that he's got to say mm -hmm. are worth the weight in gold. So from, from my point of view, I think that you, you will get a great effect out of this, but you also get a lot of great information uh, that you can apply to other things as as well. Nice. Little nuggets. Nuggets of info. Nuggets of, nuggets of gold, yeah. Um, so Harry, if you're up for it, should we should we perform this? I'd love to see it. This is actually the first time I've seen it. I'm not even lying. Oh, this wow. is the first time I've seen it. I've always seen it in the packaging. I've never actually seen it before. Oh, so well, I'm Harry's excited. in for a treat then. So uh, I think we'll have a performance of Till Death. So Harry, um, you know that I've been doing magic for, for quite a few years mm. now, um, since, uh, since I was 10 in fact, so a long, long time. Uh, and it's strange, you know, you tell people that you do magic, they kind of look at you and go, oh. Mm. You tell them you work in a magic shop and it's like, mm. You know, it's, it, it, and it's weird, it's weird hearing information about something that you may not, mm. you may not know. Um, a few years back, uh, my great uncle passed away and we had to go in and clear out his attic and, and sort of through bits and pieces. And uh, we came across this box and in the box was a whole bunch of like camera gear and like photos and, and things like that. And I remember saying to, to my dad, it's a bit strange because, you know, I never knew that he took photos. I never knew that he had uh, any sort of inkling mm -hmm. towards like uh, that as a hobby, yeah. certainly. Uh, my dad was like, yeah, yeah, he's taken photos for years. You know, he used to take photos at weddings, much like I perform magic at mm -hmm. weddings. Um, but it was strange and, and uh, a bit weird knowing that someone that I've known for, you know, a huge part of my life, now this piece of information is now there that I didn't know. Yeah. And you kind of think, well, you know, you kind of feel a little bit cheated, to, to yeah. be fair. It's like me knowing you for as long as I've known you, and then all of a sudden you turn around and go, oh, did you know this? And me go, what? I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, um, so it is a very strange feeling. Um, more so because no one could really tell me why he why he gave it up. All right. Um, my my aunt muttered something about him being uncomfortable with one of the things that was that was um, to do with one of the weddings that he was at. Um, but it was never really any sort of mm. finality as to why why he gave it up. Um, so I thought I'd bring along today uh, some of these because, um, you know, I wanted to share some of the photos with you that he'd, he'd taken. Um, and like I said, these particular ones, uh, they are they're all black and white, uh, so it tells you how long ago they were, they were taken. Um, and in fact, look, we have, uh, we have, can I just put them there? Yeah, that's it, very good. Uh, we have these, uh, these photos here, you can see that you know they're they're quite that you can argue was happy. Yeah, um, but they are quite. They you know they they are. They look happy. Yeah, they do. They are snapshots of a. Uh, they're snapshots of a day. You mm -hmm. know, a day in the life of these people. A special day. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Harry, we're going to try something. All right. Um. You might find this a little bit strange. But I had a bit of an uneasy feeling when I saw these. In fact, I started to get goosebumps now. Um, a bit of an uneasy feeling about these. And I, I may have identified the one of the reasons why, or the reason why uh, my uncle stopped taking the photos. Um, what hand you right? Are you right-handed? Yeah, right. Excellent. Do you want to just hold your right hand out for me? That's it, very good. Just nice and loose. Very good. And what I want you to do, not that loose, no, you're fine. I want you to just move it up and down. That's it, just move it up and down the photos. And then whenever you feel inclined to, I want you to stop just somewhere. Mm, around. 
around here. Actually. Around here? Yeah. Fair enough. Bring your hand down. Now, uh, let me ask you a question. Did you feel anything at all when when I was talking to you then? You know, when when uh, you were when you were here. Did you feel I, I did all? actually. Yeah, a little bit of a bit of eeriness. A bit of eeriness. Yeah. But not uncomfortable? No, not too, no, not really uncomfortable. All right, okay. Um, the reason I ask is because I have not told you anything about these photos at all. Mm, no. But uh, I like information, I like seeking out information, so I decided to root through the photos and see if I can find out at least a little bit. For most part, I didn't find out too much. One of them, though, uh, you did quite a, quite a sad story, unfortunately. Um, in fact, in one of these couples, their their marriage ended quite abruptly because uh, the act of murder was was committed. Um, Harry, this time hold out both hands. That's it, very good. I want you to just chillax. <laughs> chillax. Trying to be a bit modern there. Um, just chillax. And what I want you to do is when I snap my fingers, it's all seriousness now. When I snap my fingers, I want you to just drop one hand. Ready? Yeah. Wow. It's fair enough. Um, not only was that a quite a definite snap, but that, that was, was a definite thing. thud yeah. <laughs> as well. Any particular reason why? Uh, no. Most people, no, they no feel reason. that their, their arm is drawn down to the table. Yeah. Did it any sort just of thing? It felt like Lou's just like... Uh, but, but then like a dead weight. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. Um, like I said, I don't know anything about these people here. I do know about this couple here. This is Charlie and Jean. Um, now, um, I did a little bit of research. In, in fact, could you take on that for me? Yeah. Uh, just tear it down the Just take it and tear it down the down middle. Down the middle? Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's not an easy... It's a bit weird <laughs> tearing off a photo, isn't it? I wouldn't Yeah, and just hand me one. Yeah, well, fair enough. Um, and if you don't mind, just um, take that one. Yeah. And uh, just tear it in half. In half? Yeah, that's, that's fine. What, little Charlie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did manage to find... It is an uneasy feeling, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I feel it? really bad. <laughs> Um, here we have uh, Charlie and, and Jean. Um, their, their story is actually quite sad. Remember I said about the act of murder being committed. Mm. Uh, they were, to all intents and purposes, quite a happy couple. Um, they got married. Uh, they, the ceremony was very good, like any wedding. And uh, they, to everybody, they seemed quite happy. Mm. And, and so they were for a, a good couple of weeks. Um, unfortunately, Charlie liked his drink. And uh, it wasn't unusual for a Friday and Saturday night for, for Charlie to be out of the pub. Um, and certainly on a Saturday um, and Sunday morning for Jean to appear with uh, several new bruises, uh, which, was, which was very sad. Um, it seemed that this went on for quite a while. Uh, in fact, you know, they were only married uh, not even a month and uh, the cracks started to show. Uh, one morning, Jean had had a little bit too much. And what she did is she went downstairs, she got a carving knife from the drawer, she walked back upstairs, and whilst Charlie was asleep in bed, she took the knife to his throat. And then, unfortunately, spent the rest of her days in the mental institution, uh, which, is, which is very That's sad. That's actually given me shivers, I'm not even lying. When, when you consider how happy, I mean, at the very beginning, you actually said, you pointed to this photo and you say, they look happy. Mm, yeah. And it just goes to show you that things that happen, you know, they're not always as the, as they appear. I didn't know about my uncle taking photos. You didn't know that actually this is what happens to, uh, what seemingly are happy people, this is what can happen, yeah? Uh, through the pressures of, of family and family life, I, I guess. Um, I think that my uncle actually had a similar sort of feeling. I know I did. Um, out of all of the photos that he could have taken, out of all of the photos that he could have taken, there was only one that he had a duplicate of. Only one, okay? And I think that possibly he was feeling a little bit like you were feeling. Do you wanna just open that for me? You'll find in there a, a photo, um, and you'll find that actually this has been torn as well. Um, oh, it's hard to see yeah, out there, but if it, I yeah. just tip to it, you can see that this is torn. Um, and in actual fact, you will also see uh -huh. that of all the people, Charlie and Jean, were the ones that stood out. And I am just gonna leave that there. Oh, you even talk, look at that. That's even in the same place there. Um, That's weird. You know, we never know what goes on in people's minds, but uh, I'm sure that, you know, um, I'm sure that, you know, if we could change the past, we probably would have, you know. Um, it's just very, very sad, very sad. That is sad, but weird. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Andy, for that, for that nightmare, thanks. <laughs> You're very welcome. 
So, Harry, uh, that was uh, Jim Critchlow's Till Death. Um, as you can see, it's very much a performance piece. Uh, you can shorten and make the, the performance as long as you want, but... Uh, it draws you in, like, draw, draw me in. So yeah, that's it. And you do have other things that happen, um, lots of things that you can take a, excuse me, advantage of. Um, and it is just a brilliant effect. Um, and you end up with a really strange souvenir, mm. and I guarantee that people will walk away with uh, this and they will literally be going, oh my God, you know, I could have chosen any photo and this happened and they will tell people about it as well. I've had people that, um, you know, from my friend's party, the, they still say now about the time when I did it and the fact that people are still talking about it, you know, um, so it's good for, for that. Um, and, you know, if you, if you really wanted to as well, I guess you could then get a sticker and put your, your details on the back um, if you were that way inclined. Um, kind of detracts from the effect but you know i guess the, you but know. when you think i put my hand over there's how how many photos there are uh there's 12 12 photos i put my hand over anyone yeah uh then i gave then i ripped it in half yeah gave you any piece yeah ripped my piece in half yeah and it was uh yeah match. it is um, a lot of there's a there's a lot of freedom yeah. you know and it, it, you know this is this is what good uh, mentalism i think is all about just that that degree of freedom and how much people can can do um, and of their own free will, mm. and still this is the outcome that that happens. You know, people know when they've been forced towards choices, um, but if they get this impression of, of freeness, then you know this impacts later on when they go away, going, oh, you know, and I could have chosen any one of the photos, and I was drawn to this one, especially as your your presentation is now reinforcing mm. that, and you were drawn to that, Harry, at the very beginning, you you said, oh, they look happy, you know, all of these sort of things. Um, so it's a, a, a very, very good effect and one that I would recommend 110%. And it's only a little point, but even the fact I took the photo out of the envelope, mm. even that, like, you may think, oh, you just put that in there or yeah. something like that, but I took it out of the envelope. There's yeah. no way of... I mean, you, you've got other effects that we've ever, we've obviously talked about that have a presentation and then they have this shock element at the mm -hmm. end. This doesn't have a shock element. What this has is the element of the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand yeah. up and people walk away going, oh, you know, so it's not so much ah as it is, yeah. Ooh, you know, yeah. um, and they start questioning stuff then, which is, which is great. So uh, that is Jim Critchlow's Till Death. Um, we have uh, these in stock as well. Um, do yourself a favour, you know, grab uh, any one of the effects that are here. I mean, they, they are all great. Um, this is the one that I'm recommending, but they are they are all great and well worth checking out. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah. So, um, talking, going back a little bit to, mm. to Jamie Dawes. Yes. Um, as some of you may know, Jamie Dawes has had a couple of academies with us. Yes. Um, your big event, which I mention all the time, mm -hmm. uh, about if you're looking to, to get into performing magic for, for paid gigs or uh, just little tips on it. Uh, he's got one on that. Uh, but also, um, one of our best courses, in my opinion so far, uh, has been Tackling Terrifying Taboos. Yes. Um, and so he's doing another one this year, Tackling yeah. Terrifying Taboos 2. Yes. Uh, and some of... <laughs> oh, well, I, I know what he's got planned, so... <laughs> uh, some, of the, some of the material does overlap, but... Uh, a lot of it's been uh, revamped, uh, and there's also a lot of new stuff. I know for a fact he's teaches PK Touching on there, um, which I do a lot. He's given that away? Yeah. Is he really? Oh, you're in for a treat. <laughs> and that's not even a sales thing. He's actually genuinely questioning that because it is so good. Yeah, yeah. He'd done it at Frank and Bernie, didn't he? And <laughs> he everyone did. is looking around yeah. and just like, what the hell is going If, if we, we were out for Dave's birthday and uh, we were in Frankie and Benny's and he, yeah, he started performing it, yeah. uh, you know, on a, on a whim. And uh, the whole of Frankie and Benny stopped <laughs> and watched, um, which I think is testament mm. to how great it is. It and is he even performed it. On uh, Steve, who does go to the Magic Club, and he, mm. he was like, you're having me on. He yeah. was definitely near me. He was like, I promise you, he was not near you. It is, it is so good. Yes, it is it's very, so very good. good. So you are definitely in for a treat. I mean, uh, Jamie is, uh, to my mind, he's exploring stuff uh, that, you know, lots of people aren't exploring at the moment, mm. which is great. You know, he yeah. is very much into the theatrical element of, of Magic, uh, the bizarre side, um, and obviously the mentalism as well, uh, and other Magic generally. But... He really is looking at stuff uh, from a from a whole different angle that mm. I think hasn't been explored for a very very long time. So you are you are definitely in for a treat. With and that. It, it is one of them things where if you it's just another side like uh, performing uh, 
stand like not standard magic, but performing the regular magic uh, is good. But then when you when you can and have the ability to say, I tell you what, let's try this. I don't know whether this isn't magic as such. It's whatever the the dark arts or something like that. And it, you can tell people will just get involved because ev- everyone gets scared. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of the things that some people just enjoy getting scared and they wanna they wanna be in on it. They wanna believe. Yeah. That, uh, how many times do you, do you believe in ghosts? People yeah. want to believe in stuff like that. So it's one of the things where you can really kind of get yeah. involved and, and, and enjoy. And and here I think is the, the, the key to it is that when you watch Jamie, and we've both watched mm-hmm. him, um, both in a formal and an informal setting, uh, you don't ever fear, feel that you're being put uh, being made to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. You don't ever fear, feel that you're being made to be put on the spot. Um, everything that he does, I mean, he's very personable. Um, he's got a great rapport with people. Yeah. Um, and, the, and that, I think, is his way of then um, bringing you into his world. And once yeah. you're in there, now he can start playing around with your psyche a little bit yeah. more. Um, so he is very, very good at doing that. And I, and I have no doubt that he'll be imparting that, that information in uh, the Tackling Terrifying Taboo 2. It will be a great course. So, yes. The competition, do you want to just remind people what that was? Yeah, so right the now? competition was, uh, there was a famous magician that said, stone walls not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. Uh, the anniversary of his death is coming up very soon. I know, how do I know this uh, information? That is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, that, uh, the anniversary is coming up soon. Uh, so if you can send in who he is uh, to the sales at alexam.co.uk email address, we will choose a winner. We will give that to Peter and Dave, who yep. will announce it on a future vlog, as they will do on past winners, yep. um, because obviously they're not here today. Um, but other than that, um, it has been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure with you, Andy. It's been a pleasure with you, Harry. One of um, And uh, I hope to, uh, we do it again. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been Possibly fun. next year. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Once a year. Well, maybe I'll ask Dave if we can do it twice a year. Yes. Um, so, Webb and my pet Boris, Monster Cards, Till Death, Scream, and he's not here. Uh, and we will end on the Tack and Terrifying Taboos trailer. So, uh, it's buy from me. And bye from me. See you again next time on the Alakazam video blog. Last year, myself and the Alakazam Academy hosted an evening of the creepy and the macabre. We laughed, we cried, and we found it very hard to get to sleep afterwards. Due to the success of last year's course, Taboos is back, bigger, scarier, and with more jumps than ever before. In this two-day course, we'll be delving into the history books. We'll be discovering how the bizarrists and mentalists of the past use vaudevillian techniques in their seances and their spook shows. And in the prop section, we'll be looking at how to age props, how to source props, and how to even use some of the tricks you already have in a bizarre setting. Uh, The clown has been watching Clown has been spying. Uh, catch the balloon before it drops. Catch the balloon before it <laughs> pops. <laughs> I'll be teaching you my handling of PK touches, and I'll be covering any questions you have about performing PK effects in the real world. Scripting, performance advice, theatrical technique, environment, choosing your audience, and being a responsible performer are just some of the things covered in this course. And don't forget, because of the live aspect of the Alakazam Academy, you can ask any questions you may have. From Ouija boards to haunted dolls, if you're looking to leave an impression on your audience and maybe explore the darker side of magic, then join me this October at the Alakazam Academy. He's done it.